Uh, Peter Zalewski joins us right now. He's not into committee meetings. He's, he's about action from Miami. <laughs> Condo Vultures Realty. He's a real estate broker. Good to see you again, Peter. How are things going today? They're going very well. Now, you know, one thing we neglect to talk about, I think, on this show and on the network even often is commercial real estate. We talk about residential real estate all the time because it affects all of us on a day-to-day -day basis. We talk about, obviously, what's going with the spill in the Gulf. We talk about financials and this and that. But we, I think we neglect talking about commercial real estate. But there might be a reason for this, Peter, and that's because this bubble bursting hasn't happened yet in the industry, has it? It, you know, it really hasn't. Um, we deal a lot with Florida-based institutions and regional institutions, banks effectively down here. They've all been focused on residential, and what many of the banks have been telling us is they need to clean the residential books, try to get them off of uh, uh, basically the balance sheet, and then they're going to focus over to commercial come fourth quarter. That's why I don't think it's surprising that we've had five bulk deals for large busted condos down here in South Florida since the beginning of June. We've had 50 in the last two years, so wow. really the residential is getting cleansed, and the, and the commercial is really what the lenders are preparing for. So you think it is the next shoe to drop? I mean, because I know up here, you know, I, I live in New Jersey, there's still blown out shopping centers. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. stores are still shut down. I don't see people renting space all that quickly. No, you know, really what we're seeing in South Florida uh, in particular is that the, as that unemployment rate gets higher and higher and higher, these retailers, these office uh, users, uh, they're, you know, they're not able to justify the prices that they were paying. They're now going in, they're trying to renegotiate their terms, they're trying to downsize, they're trying to do a variety of different things. And as that happens, it's putting pressure on landlords. And don't forget, commercial real estate is much more fundamental based on numbers, unlike residential, which has a lot more emotions and feelings into it. Mm -hmm. So as some of these loans start to come due on the commercial side, watch for the lenders to be a little resistant resistant in terms of refinancing and, and extending the mortgages. So that, I guess that, that's my next point is you say it's a little bit more about the numbers. Um, it seems to me like it would be easier then to uh, redo a deal because there isn't any emotion attached to it. You're just saying, look, I, I, I don't want to take over this strip mall, so I'm going to extend your terms. I want to you know, put push payment out a little bit. It seems to me like there would be more of that. You're saying that at some point in time, and maybe that's right around the corner, lenders are going to stop being so readily, readily available to do that. Well, well, here's sort of the difference. The difference is residential. There's a sentimental, heartfelt um, aspect to it. It's very difficult to kick a primary user out of their home because of unemployment, because of a variety of different things. It's much different when you get to commercial and it's all numbers. And more importantly, you have the regulators paying a closer and closer eye in terms of what are the, what's the place really worth versus what you have outstanding on the loan. Mm. Uh, can you justify it? Unlike on the residential side where, you know, there's that family of four living there and they're struggling to get by. Regulators can maybe cut some uh, slack on that side, but they're not going to cut it on the commercial side. You know, I've got to believe it's all correlated to the consumer, too, right? I mean, especially storefront places, things like that. If the consumer's not out there shopping, there's no real reason to have a store to begin with. As you're saying, the banks have no problem throwing these guys out on their butt. So we could potentially see way more stores shut down before this thing is over. You know, ultimately, we're anticipating that there, there will be a shakeout, especially on the retail side. Some of these little shops that popped up that never really kind of made some sense. And in my neighborhood where my office is, um, you know, there, there's a little arts craft place that's trying to, you know, they're, they're paying an expensive rent and they're trying to make some money there. You know, there's no way that they're going to survive. This, this is a company that during the boom time when people had a lot of disposable income, they were mm -hmm. tapping into uh, equity lines. They were right. able to go out and buy some of these luxury goods. It made sense today as people are, are cutting back and they're becoming a little bit more frugal. You know, these companies just don't make sense. So Ultimately, what will happen is these companies will go bad, new companies will pop up, they'll lease the space at a much better price, and then they'll become successful. And as it becomes successful, then you'll start to see the rents go up again. But, but it's a long, painful cycle. What are you talking about with this cycle? How far are you looking before we finally start to, as, the, as you say, the banks start to put, put aside the residential issues and start focusing on the commercial issues, and maybe that other shoe does drop? Well, I, I would tell you, uh, when unemployment rate is 5% or less, it's pretty much a landlord's market. When the unemployment rate is 10% or greater, it's pretty much a, a tenant's market, just to give you some perspective. Um, so, you know, we're really in a tenant's market right now. But what I would tell you is on the residential side, we're now five years into from the point where we hit our peak in South Florida. Mm -hmm. and we're finally starting to see some stabilization. So I don't know if that's necessarily reflective or indicative of what will happen on the commercial side. But, you know, I would really pay attention to unemployment. Over 10%, tenant gets to call the shots. If it's less than 5%, the landlord's calling the shots mm. on, a, on a lease basis. Peter, we don't have a ton of time, but are there buying opportunities now? I mean, if I want to go out there and buy a strip mall, buy a uh, condo building, office, or building, office yeah. building, right, um, i got to believe there's opportunity. 
Well, what the lenders are telling us is anybody coming to them with an equitable price today, the bank will take because they feel as if the pricing is going to go down in the future. So the banks are basically trying to get off while anything they can, while they can, while the pricing is still there in anticipation of a decrease, uh, you know, uh, next right, few right, quarters, right. especially beginning Q4. Yeah, so right. just take what you can. Peter, thanks so much for being with us today. Appreciate the opportunity. Peter Zalewski down in my favorite place in the whole wide world.